Welcome to this somewhat special uh, webinar. Uh, it will be a mix of a technological discussion or presentation with the flavor of nostalgia. And that is at least for some of us and perhaps also for some of you that there is a nostalgic flavor to this because we're going to show you <clears throat> 25 years of, uh, of Inca tools. Uh, and there are even uh, live demos of uh, one of the earliest versions of, uh, of Inca. Because today we're going to use the 25th anniversary of our Inca MPC product as an excuse to present you how this engineering software tool grew from an ambitious development plan in 1999, eh, 1998 sorry, to a tool that runs on, on all continents of the world and in many different industries. Yeah? So in uh, 1998, a team of uh, IPCOS in uh, Boxtel, that's the office where we are uh, at this moment, yeah, started a new project in, in Visual Studio called uh, Inca MPC. And most, if not all, members uh, have an, had a PhD in the in the subject, so they were really expert uh, experts in the, in the in the domain, and had he, had already a few to even many years of uh, experience with model-based predictive control in different industries. Yeah. Nevertheless, they they had a whole bunch of, of fresh ideas that needed to be implemented in a fresh new product, and that is called Inca MPC. So I'm happy to see that uh, current customers and partners are in the call and also potential new customers and new partners. Yeah. And especially I, I mentioned partners because uh, it is perhaps less known to, uh, to most of you that we are also very welcoming uh, new partnerships with value added resellers or um, engineering companies around the world that uh, will implement our technologies uh, across the globe yeah, and in many different industries. Today, I also welcome Leon Arians, the APC technology manager of IPCOS. I always refer to Leon when I present him to the audience as uh, the father of Inca. Yeah? And the, developer, the development of our Inca tools is, of course, not an, uh, a one-man effort. Definitely not. It's a team effort. Uh, but today, Leon will represent his development team from our uh, offices in uh, Boxel and uh, Leuven. Now, in case you have any questions uh, during the presentation, <clears throat> yeah, uh, please use the chat functionality in this uh, webinar platform. And then at the end of the presentation from uh, Leon, I will come back to you and I will raise all your questions uh, to him so that uh, you can get all the answers. Now, prior to passing on the microphone to Leon, and not the camera, it seems, yeah, but only the microphone, <laughs> I want to give you a very brief introduction to IPCOS. So give me a couple of minutes to explain for the people who don't know us who IPCOS is. So IPCOS is a company that delivers consultancy, uh, delivery of, uh, of full projects, and also support. Now, what does that mean? With consultancy, that can be a, a, a one-day work, a, a, a one week, one month, one year, where we help you to uh, to do some troubleshooting, but where we also can help you to define the roadmap towards digitalization. And in this case of today, it's model-based predictive control or APC, yeah, and RTO and so on. Uh, consultancy um, where we define the optimal solution for our customers, and then later on. When there is a business case for it, of course, we can deliver the full projects from uh, A to Z. And full projects, going to come back on that one uh, in the next slide. Yeah. Uh, so um, delivery of the project. And then finally, of course, the support. What does that mean? Well, keeping all these APC solutions up and running, keeping all these developed uh, digitalization platforms up and running for you, taking care of new functionalities, new uh, operating systems, new uh rules regarding cybersecurity and so on many reasons why in fact uh we should stay in close contact to our customers to take care that whatever we have developed for them uh generates benefits for uh, the years to come yeah so we are already now 28 years in business yeah we have um i think approximately 90 engineers well uh, for the moment distributed over seven offices around the world and we are active really around the world in uh, many countries and uh, several continents. Yeah. Good. Uh, since uh, December last year, we became part of a bigger family called Process Automation Solution, which is on its turn an, uh, a company that belongs to the ATS group, Canadian group. Yeah. And uh, that is uh, the PA Solutions uh, family is uh, a family with 61 offices around the world with 1,400 employees. 
And they are not only in automation, but they are also uh, very active in digitalization. And that is why I said we can deliver the full scope uh, when we talk about APC projects. Uh, in the past, we had to rely on, on companies, third party companies for doing DCS uh, programming and so on and so on. But now our mother, sister, or nephew, or how you want to call it, uh, can do that uh, together with us. So we can offer as it costs a full project from delivering servers, DCS programming, APC, aftercare, uh, and so on and so on. So that is why we are very happy to be a part of these uh, PA Solutions uh, family. Yeah. Good. Yeah, it takes a little bit of time to uh, switch. And it takes me to start talking to switch to me. This is my, my I look at a video stream for me. Is that still active, uh, Christian? Okay, you can uh, you can see me. Yes. Ah, well, well, we'll see how long it lasts. It dropped five times in the last five minutes, but uh, has been stable for the last few minutes. Okay. Welcome everybody. Uh, welcome everybody who was here 25 years ago, and welcome everybody uh, who joined us uh, later. Um, I had a chat with Christian before uh, this webinar, and while well, we considered when was it exactly that Inca was started. Well, Ipcos Technology, the company was founded in July 1998. So we are a little bit uh, ahead of the times that we are celebrating the birthday of Inca already, but well, pretty close. And the work on the Ipcos novel control architecture was started right away. So we started working on things called Inca uh, around 98, uh, July 98. There are other products that we call Inca these days that we started uh, working on or that people started working on earlier. Also, you will find in Inca still parts of technology that was developed uh, sooner than that, but not under the Inca umbrella. So I guess it's fair to say that Inca started in July uh, 98. Oh. Okay, so why did we start Inca? Um, well, there was a group of uh, eight people. Um, you can debate whether that's the correct number, but I think eight is the most accurate one, although other, one, other numbers can be defended. And those eight people, they had in common that they had ideas on how APC could be done in a different and presumably better way. And to make those ideas happen, they started the company and decided to implement their own MPC. Um, and back in those days, the Tangram Inc. Uh, logo uh, was the EPCOS logo. You see the, the, the modern one, the nowadays one below it. But at those days, um, we had a, a Tangram uh, logo. I mentioned, and Christian mentioned, there was a group of people who got together to work on Inca. These people had different backgrounds. Um, some of them had real hands-on experience in glass manufacturing. Um, some had been working in refining and petrochemical, uh, petrochemicals. Uh, there were quite a few PhDs uh, involved uh, at the time. So we came from academia. Um, we had one uh, full professor uh, uh, on board. So uh, that was the kind of people who started Inca. And no presentation on Inca would be complete uh, without showing you something from the glass manufacturing uh, era. So let me try and demo that not only by means of a slide, but by means uh, of um, a demo that goes back to, well, Windows XP. I set up a virtual machine that runs Windows XP. That's actually already way more modern than how it was 25 years ago. Inca was first developed on Windows 2000, but well, was challenging enough to get the Windows XP running. And let me apologize already in advance if in the midst of my presentation, uh, a dialogue pops up saying that I need to activate Windows XP. Microsoft switched off the services that allow you to activate Windows XP years ago. So um, I would want to activate my Windows XP, but I can't. Um, so 
the example that I have here is a glass furnace. And I'll show you a picture of the inside of the glass furnace uh, in a minute. Um, but what you see in this simulation is the, bot the top part. Well, that's a top view or a bottom view, so you want, but at least in that uh, uh, direction of a glass furnace. Um, the bottom part or the middle part, that's a side view. And in a glass furnace around this area, there is molten glass. And there's burners, uh, these yellow uh, ellipses, they represent burners that are well, uh, burning flames, uh, throw flames over the glass bath, which makes, uh, I guess it's basically sand that you're melting, make that melt. Um, and the job of Inca is to control the amount of fuel and the amount of oxygen that is fed to the various burners so that they burn more or less intensely um, so that you get a certain temperature profile at the top of uh, your glass furnace, the, the ground temperatures. There's a couple of sensors in the walls, the side temperatures, and there are a few temperature sensors at the bottom. So Inca's uh, task is to influence all these degrees of freedom to make sure that you get a certain uh, well, temperature profiles or the, the temperatures reach a certain set point. So that's one of the glass examples that we have. I'll return to the simulation uh, in a moment, but let me try and show you the image i promised this is what the inside of a furnace uh, looks like here at the bottom you see the glass the molten glass and here's the burner that's clearly throwing flames uh, over the, the glass uh, bed the glass bath uh, i should say so um before i return to the demo let me first provide some context. Inca is part uh, of a control hierarchy where at the bottom of the hierarchy, there's the process unit, um, which is connected to a distributed control system. Um, well, actually in almost all the cases that we encountered, you could use a PLC also, but there's some primary control or regulatory, uh, regulatory control system, which is on top of that. Um, the level above, there's property estimation. There's Presto and Diamond that I get to talk about uh, briefly. That's in that area. And then we reach the level where there's the supervisory control system. And that's typically where Inca is. And we're not always consistent. Sometimes Inca means actually Inca MPC. And sometimes we mean the broader package of systems. Uh, in the early days, Inca was the MPC and the stuff that supported it. So this slide, which is an actual slide from 2005. Um, well, I, I took it as is. I think I removed animations in there, but all the, the product names you find there, the way we presented, uh, that's how we presented it in, uh, well, uh, it says it cost technology 2004. But actually, if you look at uh, when this, uh, presentation was last modified. It says actually January 2004. So I'm, I'm not sure exactly which one to believe. Level above MPC, there's uh, inline optimization. Uh, and I'll briefly mention Pathfinder, which uh, is at that level. And even above that, there's planning and scheduling. If you're running a refinery, uh, there's some planning going on uh, that decides how much of different products that you want to produce. That depends on market prices. That depends on how, uh, to what extent your tank farm has been filled. Um, all of that is quite a bit higher uh, level than Inca MPC, uh, but M MPC is well somewhere in the middle of this. And if you look in other direction, yeah. If you look at the architecture of the Inca suite that we set up at the time, then there's an OPC data server in the middle with several things connected to it. Um, all the blue parts, um, most of them rectangles, but also the OPC data server, 
those are products that belong to the Inca suite. So that's stuff that uh, we make. The uh, green, blue, green part, that's the process and the process equipment. The yellow uh, containers, those are configuration files. And there's also Inca configurator mentioned here. That's light blue because it was planned, but it didn't exist yet at the time. So there's this central OPC data server in the middle. And at that time, it was a very open platform that different uh, parts could connect to Inca engine, which was the MPC proper, Inca test, um, which did trending of uh, variables of interest. It recorded these values of interest. Um, and it got its name actually from the fact that it could also excite the process. It was open loop excitation um, that Inca test did. So it played a sequence of steps without regards to how, you know, whether the process had room to make those steps. Uh, if that would violate the limit, operator would have to uh, counteract, would not be Inca test. Um, we'll have a different product now that does that too, but Inca test didn't do that at the time. Inca simulator is not something that you would typically uh, have in an online environment, but for demos and for tuning, Inca simulator was there. Um, and Inca Calc, uh, that's uh, uh, a module that allows you to do custom calculations. And there, there always were some in early um, configurations. It's good to have the freedom. Things that uh, happened there could be data pre-processing, could be uh, taking averages, could be uh, detecting whether the uh, well, let's say the the regulator, the, the lower level controls were in the proper mode for Inca to use. Um, custom logic could be implemented in Inca Calc and Inca View. Uh, is um, well can be the operator interface for Inca MPC as it can be because the alternative is that you implement the custom scre uh, screen on the DCS and that's also used a lot. Um, but Inca View can also be used to by, uh, by the operator to control Inca. So let's have a look what that looked like in practice. So when I remove. Um, the simulator, this is what the data server looks like. Um, and it's basically, um, well, a database with all these tags in here that contain uh, process values, but also set point that Inca writes a status that says whether uh, an MV can be written or not. Um, lots of things uh, are uh, in the data server. Um, Inca view looks like this where you, and I stopped the simulation, so that's why the trends are not moving and uh, yeah, why, why the history is not very long. But here you can see uh, what has happened to the CVs, what will happen in the future, MVs. I won't talk too much about MPC. I'm more or less assuming that you're at least vaguely familiar with the concept uh, of MPC. And what you can see also here in Inca view on this tab is, uh, is it on? Yes, it's on. Also, the green button says this. And it shows that Inca uh, allowed at the time to switch between different models. Um, so you could load a different model here while the controller was still running. Uh, I get to talk about that functionality later on. Um, it's something that we seem to need a lot less than we thought back in the day that we would need it. Let's, let's say that already. Um, there's one thing that wasn't on the slide, and that's the scheduler. Um, what the scheduler does is it triggers an application to run. The application sends a signal back saying, I'm done with my job for this cycle, and then it triggers the next. It can do a couple in parallel. But the scheduler, it makes sure that one thing runs after the other. And what you also have in this case is you can imagine that the temperatures at the top of uh, a furnace, which are, uh, well, pretty close to the burners, and there's no bed of glass on top of that, they respond much faster than the temperatures at the bottom of the glass, because you need to heat the whole glass bath uh, in order for those temperatures to run. So the 
Uh, the typical way of handling this is to have two controllers, one for the crown, which runs at a higher sampling rate than the one that controls the bottom. That's also the scheduler's job to make sure that these run uh, at appropriate times. So that's, and also this is what our Inca icons looked like uh, back at the time. Okay. Now let's... Um, Hang on. Spent, well, a few words about diamond because that um, I showed that uh, the platform, the Inca platform, was a rather open one, which would also enable adding um, programs, uh, applications to Inca that are not that close to Inca. Um, and Diamond was a tool that, uh, a prototype tool, uh, I think I should say, that implemented a dynamic monitoring tool that uh, was developed at the uh, University of Technology in Delft. Uh, it aimed to detect that uh, agglomerates uh, form in a fluidized bed. That's something you want to detect and want to counteract because if they grow too large, your fluidized bed stops being fluidized. Well, whatever the, the technology, it was, uh, let's say, a kind of soft sensing tool that detected events, um, and it could easily be added to the Inca platform, even though it was mainly a development that took place outside of Inca. So um, that's something that we got from having this kind of structure. Okay. IPCOS and the Leuven company, ISMC, they, the collaboration between the two companies goes back to 1998. So maybe not the very first week, but it didn't take half a year for the two companies to work together. And actually, if you look at the people inside the company, they worked together before that, but uh, in different capacities. Uh, there have been PhD students. Uh, from University of Eindhoven, University of Leuven, who work together also in that capacity. So the collaboration between the people goes back even further than uh, 1998. So it wasn't a big surprise, I guess, that the two companies merged in 2002. And then Presto and Rapid uh, were added to the portfolio of the joint uh, or the, well, they, they merged also into the joint portfolio of the two companies. Uh, they were still called Presto and Rapid at the time. Presto, a soft sensing tool, Rapid, uh, a loop tuning tool. Um, they are now known as Inca Sensor and Inca PID Tuner. Um, so that's, uh, yeah, it goes an ISMC joining. ISMC had a much more, well, Speaking for myself, a much more beautiful logo <laughs> than Ipcos had. Um, but yeah, that uh, would be replaced by an Ipcos logo later on, a new Ipcos logo later on. One of the things that um, we had in mind, or one of the ideas we had in mind with when we made the original um, Inca was uh, something that later evolved to become Pathfinder. And here again, I took a tool, uh, a slide from an old slide deck. Uh, I removed the uh, animations, but other than that, it is as is. And uh, it's actually the only slide in the slide deck that contains a formula, and I won't even discuss what the formula means. So I guess we've come a long way in 25 years. But the idea of Pathfinder, I'm going to um, explain. The idea there is that you are producing well, a product, that's what you produce, that is needs to meet a certain uh, quality criterion, but you are the, the plant you're using for that, it can use different qualities, different grades, different types of products. And that's indicated here by these purplish uh, bars when whatever the quality parameter is, it could, could be a purity, could be a composition, could be a thickness, whatever the, the parameter is, as long as it between is between an upper and a lower bound, it's in spec and you can sell it at a good price. If it's between two grades, two quality specs, 
um, you have to sell it at a discount or maybe you can't even sell it at all, then it's worth much less. And once you are back between spec again, uh, it becomes more it becomes more valuable again. So the idea of Pathfinder is to reduce the time that you transition that you take to transition from producing one product, one grade, one quality to another one, which is symbolized here by the blue line uh, that represents how you would go from producing the uh, the spec where your density of whatever needs to be 900. If you go to the higher density product in the traditional way, it takes, in this example, 25 hours. And Pathfinder's job is to stay within spec as long as possible uh, at the lower side and reach the spec at the higher side as quickly as possible so that you are out of spec the uh, shortest possible amount of time, which in this example is reduced to 12 hours. So instead of uh, being off spec for 25 hours, instead of producing a uh, low value product for 25 hours, you're producing low value product for 12 hours, um, which should be economically attractive. Um, there's even, uh, uh, let's say, a euro number attached to it in this slide. So Pathfinder, uh, the idea there was it calculates the trajectories that you need to follow and uh, the, the way to go from one to another based on a nonlinear model uh, of your, your process. It does that in a detailed way, but it basically does it offline. So it's uh, calculating how that ideally should happen. And it's not bothering uh, whether the actual process uh, may get a disturbance, may behave in a slightly different way. That's the job of the MPC that's below it. So Pathfinder is basically feeding ways in which the MVs should move, in which the CVs hopefully follow also. Um, and MPC is meant to make that happen as good as possible. So that gave rise to what we called an Inca MPC, the Delta mode, where the idea was uh, there is uh, a predefined or a tra trajectory that comes from something other than Inca MPC, both for the MVs and the CVs. And Inca MPC's job is to manipulate the MVs around that trajectory so that the MVs and the CVs both uh, will stay close to the actual trajectory uh, that Pathfinder determined. So uh, it's not uh, um, controlling in absolute terms, but it's keeping the process close to a, a dynamic trajectory. It's not only a matter of saying, this is your optimal set point, stay there. No, to move in a dynamic way from one part uh, to the other. Um, well, turned out transition control wasn't as much in demand as we thought it would be. Um, and yeah, we basically, uh, stopped the Pathfinder development uh, at that point. It's not that it didn't work uh, the way we wanted to, but uh, it didn't solve the problem to the extent that we thought, or people did may not have had the problem to the extent that we thought they had it. Okay. I already mentioned that with the, let's say, the, the, the going together, the, the merging of uh, IPCOS and ISMC, uh, Presto and Rapid uh, uh, joined the Inca family, so to say. And Presto is an online soft sensing tool, uh, and it processes analyzer updates or lab sample updates. Um, that's one thing it does. The main thing it does actually is it uh, uses a model that predicts what a certain uh, process parameter is based on measurements you have available. That process parameter, you don't have a measurement for it, but based on the model, you can make an estimate for it. But the idea is that every now and then you have a lab sample that gives you information on what the actual value was, or you have a, a, an analyzer that gives you uh, periodic updates on that, but not as fast as you want them. So. The soft sensor combines these things. It runs on the model uh, to give you frequent updates, but it looks at the much less frequent uh, analyzer and labs or, and or lab sample updates that you have um, to make sure that the model stays in line 
uh, with reality. So that's the online bit. And that needs to be accompanied by an offline modeling package. Uh, one was a sensor online, the other a sensor offline. Um, and that modeling package um, to this day uses uh, or gives you the possibility to estimate static linear models, dynamic linear models, or static nonlinear models. They were based on fuzzy logic, or they are based uh, on fuzzy logic, actually. Um, something that is maybe not as often in the news or that's often behind it when people are talking artificial intelligence these days that's often neural nets but fuzzy logic also goes by that number we didn't call it artificial intelligence back in the in the day but well we were already familiar with it uh, in the 2005 time frame probably also uh, earlier than that so that's inca sensor um, I'm not going to show Inca sensor. There's not an awful lot uh, to see there compared to MPC, um, but uh, we still develop, we still maintain it. I already mentioned, I already uh, predicted in one slide that Configurator was on the horizon. That was uh, the light blue package. And what Configurator does, it um, in, tries to improve, it improves on the way of configuring uh, Inca, well, MPC, Inca scheduler, etc., um, which was traditionally done by adding CSV files. And that looks something like this. Uh, so, commas operated values. Um, you would need to, for every MV, CV, DV, there's a bunch of parameters. And, well, in the old days, people fill these in, in these kinds uh, of files where the T, well, the, the way to remember that it stands for tuning, although you could also say it, what you do there is more configuring than tuning, but well, anyway, what tuning does is it fills in a parameter inside the MPC, which is opposed to what the I for input does, where you read the value from the OPC server. And that can be a parameter like validity limits, but it's definitely going to be something like the measurement of the online CV value or what you read back from the uh, the PID loop as the set point that you send out and uh, what, what was really implemented. That's not something that can live only in Inca engine that needs to be read back. So that's going to be uh, an input line. Never mind what the D is for. And the O goes the other way. It sends status information uh, or set points the other way. So that's what the engine configuration looked like. The configuration of the data server was similar. And you had to make sure manually in the early days that um, the tags that Inca engine refers to or also that other applications refer to that they actually exist in the data server. Um, it has the possibility of creating them on the fly for you, but they won't have the value you need. So you would have to configure the data server in a separate file. And well, to complete the stuff, there's also a scheduler configuration file, which looks something like this, uh, which you needed to specify to say this runs after this, and when that's done, you have to write to this tag, and you can see that it's done uh, if that tag is written, etc. So at the time, uh, at that time, uh, editing text files was the way to configure and configurator aimed at, well, it gave you configurator projects instead that kept an eye on consistency. And I have a demo of configurator uh, waiting, but I'll leave it waiting for a while. Um, to see, well, I will I will show it if I have time, uh, and if I don't, uh, I'm going to skip it. And well, to be honest, the latter scenario is the most likely one. So we have a configurator that made it easy to have consistency across configurations, and it's also fair to say that old habits die hard. Uh, it wasn't unusual in those days to run into an engineer that said, "Yes, configurator is useful." It makes things easy, but that's for the not so advanced user. I'm an advanced user. I keep editing the text files. Never mind that they spent days figuring out why they were not consistent. So um, they used what I love. I, I guess that uh, is, is natural. 
so configure it. Um, if you look at well, uh, developments inside Inca MPC itself, and I'm not going to mention each and every change that we made, but uh, one thing that I do want to mention is in the 10 point, uh, well, 10 point something time frame, which takes us to 2010, uh, 2010, 2011 ish, we added integrating CVs to Inca MPC. Um, when you have a normal control variable, um, you expect it to reach a steady state, so to say. So if you make a step change on the MVs, on the manipulated variables, your CV will not follow it immediately, but after some time, it will settle on a, uh, the value that corresponds to the MV settings, not the same one, but the one that corresponds to it. That's how, well, let's say normal CVs behave. An integrating CV doesn't behave exactly like that. And an example of that would be that when the uh, variable that you manipulate is the flow into a vessel and the CV you are interested in is the level in that vessel, if you keep feeding with a constant rate into that vessel, then the level in that vessel will increase with a constant rate. So it will not reach a steady state value, but it will change with a fixed value. Well, that's the... Uh, what makes an integrating CV integrating. Inca didn't have it initially, and it wasn't much of a deal. We, we handled that uh, in different ways, uh, but people uh, often ask for it. Customers other than our engineers often ask for it. So we added uh, support for integrating CVs. And it's funny to see once it was added, they showed up in many, many configurations afterwards. We didn't seem to need it before that, but once they were there, uh, people used them a lot. So, wrong, that area. Uh, another development that's situated in that day is what we called the configurable engine. That doesn't mean it wasn't configurable back at the day, but it gave us some flexibility in adding and removing steps out of the engine. Um, and it's back in those days that we started talking about normal 8, normal 10, etc. mode. We have always tried, and I think we achieved that also, to be backwards compatible. But yeah, at some point we needed the flexibility to make changes that were not backwards compatible, and that's where the modes came in. Um, we still have normal 8, 10, 12, 20, 22 mode. Uh, these days, we mainly use them to take parameters away rather than adding them. But the need for that uh, extra functionality uh, came from um, work that we started on Inca for Batch. Inca for Batch was uh, an MPC solution that aimed at uh, online control of batch processes. Um, and one of the characteristics it had was that it was a shrinking horizon controller. Um, you're probably familiar with receding horizon, which means the horizon is a fixed distance away from now. But when now progresses towards the future, the horizon that you look at for your control problem, it moves along with how now moves shrinking horizon is it ends at a given time and the controller looks until that time and when time progresses the horizon that it looks forward shrinks so shrinking horizon and inca for batch used non-linear dynamic batch models um, where part of that uh, model was uh, first principles and I'm briefly digressing to EPCOS acquiring aptitude at this point. It will become clear why that needs to be interjected uh, right now. In 2008, um, EPCOS acquired Aptitude Limited, and Aptitude Limited already had uh, a multi loop tuning tool called Aptitune. Um, Inca, uh, EPCOS had Rapid Inca PID Tuner, which is for one loop, um, but uh, Aptitune aimed at multiple loops. And also Inca Discovery, while well, development had started uh, when Aptitude uh, was acquired and development continued. Actually, we had started at the time, we as the already uh, called EPCOS company, to make a successor of the modeling tool that we had then, which was called Inca Modeler 
but we decided to join those forces and that led to what is still known as the Inca Discovery product. And Inca Discovery and Inca Aptitune, they were actually combined to um, what is now still called Inca Aptitune. I'll get back to that. But first, let's um, return to the batch. But here you have the reason why I interjected this uh, Aptitune slide. The modeling tool for batch um, was known Discovery for batch. It's known as Discovery for batch. And that discovery name, that goes back to um, uh, the acquisition of Aptitude. Now, let me briefly show what Discovery for Batch uh, looks like. Um, it is a modeling tool where you draw a diagram of the model. Yeah, if I zoom in that you can read it, you don't see the whole picture, but you basically have different, uh, well, uh, components that you combine together to a dynamic model of your process. And the idea there was that you use um, first principles, physical modeling for well, for the physics, uh, but the, the chemistry, that's more of a black box oriented thing. So um, the big model looks something like this. Um, and well, to keep things organized, if I go into this subsystem, it looks something like that. And in that way, uh, you constructed a model, um, I guess, similar to what uh, Simulink uh, did at the time, and I guess still does at the time. So that's one part of the activity. Um, the other part of the activity is you get measurements of various variables in the process. And that whole time range of data, it needs to be cut into batches. When did you start a batch? And we had the IPCOS milestone wizard for it, which I'm not going to run through completely. But the idea of the milestone wizard was that you could formulate rules that said the first milestone happens when the flow becomes, the flow into the reactor becomes bigger than zero. Then the second milestone happens when the temperature reaches this level. Next milestone happens um, uh, at another formulated thing. And then uh, you would say, well, the actual batch, it runs from milestone two to milestone six. And that is then used to cut uh, the data you have for all the variables into various batches. Um, that's what happened here. And then you fitted the data, the measurement, over the course of those batches to what your model did. So that was the discovery for batch tool. Um, turned out that even though we had first principles modeling and Inca for batch made it easy to do the modeling, there was still a significant effort needed to model different batches. Um, MPC readiness was not always as needed. Um, so we decided to not develop this further. It, it did what we set out to do, but um, it didn't solve, uh, it, it wasn't economically attractive enough for customers, turned out. Um, but we had this framework that allowed us to uh, do MPC in, let's say, non-conventional ways with non-linear models in there. So we set out to put nonlinear distillation models uh, in Inca MPC. Um, and the, well, I'm skipping a year or two of development here. Um, but it turned out that if you use the proper control strategy, you get a long way, a sufficiently long way with linear models and feedback. That's something I will talk about uh, more in a later slide. But there too, it turned out that what seemed to be the right way by having more accurate models and taking those into MPC, uh, into account, into MPC, wasn't really needed to get the job done. So uh, we stuck with the simpler uh, approach there. This is a slide that I took from an internal presentation. Uh, I'm not going to uh, discuss all the enhancement we made here. I think th the sales slide style was a little less colorful than this one. No. Exactly <laughs> so, the same. <laughs> OK. So um, one thing to highlight here, uh, 
uh, is cost-based tuning. Um, Inca MPC had traditionally and still supports actually that you um, have the, you drive the controller by telling it these are the ideal values for your MV and your CV. You have different priorities, but if you have the freedom, go here. Ideal based tuning. Another way of tuning is saying this manipulated variable costs me this much or represents this value added. Um, try and maximize. Well, try to minimize the cost. Try to maximize the benefit. So cost based tuning. It's added as an alternative option in Inca MPC, um, and it's uh, it's not the only way in which it has been used. It, it, there are two different schools of thought. I think it's fair to say that these days most configurations are cost-based tuning. So it's something that was added to Inca MPC as well. In October 2014, we did our first quarterly release. Definitely wasn't the first release, but it was the first one in what would then become a quarterly sequence of releases. And in 2015, we did uh, the first pilot of the Inca HTML viewer. Um, and let me double check. So as I showed you a similar picture uh, to the a picture similar to this one earlier, where in the, let's say the traditional configuration, there's a data server at the central, Inca test, Inca view, Inca engine, all of these applications are in view. And in 2015, we kept most of what I, what I uh, showed you in the previous slide, but we added what is now known as the HTML viewer to it. And something that is a black box, so we we don't uh, bother you with how many programs do we start behind the scenes and how should they be triggered, etc. That's something that, uh, in this case, the proxy uh, handles for you, but it gives you the HTML viewer. And I'm about to show you what that HTML viewer looks like. Something like this, something not entirely unlike uh, Inca view, but now this is Firefox, could have been any other browser for that matter. But you get to see well the relevant parameters uh, like you saw before, but you can also from here upload uh, the configuration. So you basically configure the MPC from here, um, but you can also use it to operate it. And like was the case with Inca view, uh, it's up to the customer whether they give this to the operator to operate the MPC or they make custom uh, DCS screens. And one doesn't exclude uh, the other, by the way. Um, but this can be used by operators. This must be used by engineers because, well, the whole configuration, etc. that's that through here. Um, this also uh, logs data. It's, uh, you get to see the messages that uh, Inca generates, etc. from here also. So um, this is the way Inca MPC looks these days. And when I left with the slide, the old environment is still there. But gradually, we have moved on to this configuration where the old stuff is no longer there. And it's just a matter of uploading a configuration via the viewer. And it starts MPC for you. Um, and yeah, that simplifies configuration quite a bit. So in the, well, let's call it modern Inca, the data server less uh, Inca, um, we initially had convert ITP, which took uh, a configuration that configurator generated and turned it into something that could run standalone. And already at that time, uh, we were evolving the templates uh, or multi-mappings, as we call them these days. What these basically do is they tell Inca about uh, a specific type of PID loop in a specific type of DCS, and it uses the knowledge about that loop to detect whether that loop is in the mode that the Inca MPC is expecting, if it's using that uh, PID loop uh, as an MV. 
so that it can send uh, set points to it, or whether that loop is in a mode that Inca cannot control, and it will still observe what's going on, but it knows that it can't use it to send data. So these templates, they make it, well, they take the need away to configure for a specific loop. It's built into Inca, um, and we are still developing this. And another thing that uh, dates from that era um, is that we have guidelines on how to implement the interfacing between DCS and the Inca. And I'm talking about the interfacing between the programs, not the, the human interface. So how should they interact? How should the uh, switching, of, uh, switching on and off of MVs, CVs, subcontrollers, how should that go? Previously, every customer uh, made up uh, their own solution and we followed. That's still an option, uh, but it's much more efficient to take a solution that we designed for this and implement that on the various DCSs. So I've been talking mostly about Inca MPC, but there's more stuff in the Inca framework. Uh, so the Inca PID tuner, that's our single loop tuner. I already talked about AptiTune, um, which in version uh, one and two, didn't have identification. When it became Inca Aptitude 10.x, it was combined with Discovery uh, and it had its built-in identification. And at a later point, we added support for tuning of cascading loops. Um, Inca PID Tuner got an update of the user interface. Um, and what is an ongoing process for both the product lines is that we keep updating them with templates for new DCSs so that they give you the parameters in terms of those DCSs rather than generic parameters that do not fit. And another thing when I return back to MPC is there's the auto stepper. Uh, I mentioned that Inca test, it excites in an open loop way. What the auto stepper does is it excites the process. So it puts steps on the process if you switch the stepping on, but it also keeps where the CVs are relative to the limits where they need to stay between. Um, and it adapts the stepping pattern that it uses to stay within those limits. This was actually part of a research project. And we aimed also at, uh, or we considered updating the model uh, automatically. Uh, the stepper generates data. You can estimate a model for it and update it. But when you think about it, what is the best control model? Well, it's not necessary, or it is not the model that fits the data best. If you look at how pro uh, the modeling and the control design is executed, you first start by fitting a model to your data, but then you make changes to the model, which because it was the model, it's going to fit the data less. Hey, you started with the one that fitted best, so any change you make makes it fit uh, less well, but it's better suited for control. Don't have time to elaborate on that. But the main thing to take away is the best control model is not necessarily the model that fits your data best, which also means that if you have a procedure that updates your model such that it fits your new data best. It's not necessarily the best model and you should definitely not blindly update the models in your MPC. So we left the auto stepper at the point where it generates data, uh, but we do not think it's wise to automatically include that uh, in your MPC. And the final development I want to mention here is Inca Architect. Uh, I gave uh, a webinar a full hour long on uh, Architect. You can find the link to the video about that at our website, Inca Tools. Um, and well, as I predicted, I won't have time to show Configurator or Architect. But I think Architect is a interesting and nice tool. And I do invite you to look up the webinar that we had on it uh, at Inca Tools. That concludes uh, my presentation on developments. Um, we, uh, I show you slides of the licensing dongles that we used for different generations here. And actually we introduced a new generation only last uh, release, which is the dongles. They look like the dongles at the end. Um, like we have done for a long time, they well, the dongles are all, uh, always hardware-based licenses, but we still support no-clocked software licenses. 
We offer them all perpetual licenses. So you can also buy perpetual licenses from us. And since we have the new uh, licensing implementation, we also have network enabled licenses, which means you can put the license on a network server. And if you are inside that network, you can use that license. Not every license works like that, but if that's an option that interests you, talk to sales uh, about it. So we're also developing licensing uh, further. And as Christian already mentioned, um, doesn't have a visible impact on products yet, but we got acquired, it was got acquired by PA Solution uh, last December. Now, let me move on to the lessons learned. Um, we had a couple of cases where we implemented technology, um, non-linear MPC in various ways, to find out once we had it that, well, they didn't meet the customer needs exactly. And although it's a trivial thing to state, but customer needs are more important than technology is. And we also uh, found a couple of times, well, Inca MPC is a powerful technology. It's not only Inca that has this, uh, this feature, um, which doesn't stop functioning well uh, in face of a nonlinear plant. Um, there's often the reflex, oh, my plant is nonlinear. I need to have uh, a nonlinear MPC. Well, with a linear one, you get a long way. And our experience is that uh, it's, it's usually good enough together with transformations, et cetera. So it doesn't need to be complicated. And we're not saying that as somebody uh, who's envious of other people who have it, but we have implemented ourselves and actually came to the conclusion, this is not really needed. And the extra complication involved, uh, the payback is not justifying that. Simple is better than complex, um, but not too simple. I think it was Einstein who said something similar uh, to that. And who am I to disagree with Einstein? But it's always nice if the tooling reduces the perceived complexity. Now, looking forward, one minute left, so <laughs> may just make it. There are interesting developments in the field of artificial, uh, in the artificial uh, intelligence. Um, but at this point, we think it still needs to prove its worth. And um, given that we've done um, let's say extensions to MPC that um, were not that useful as we thought initially. We're, well, we're curious to see what uh, developments are happening here. We are investigating AI technology for soft sensing. Um, that is something I can mention. Um, and I mentioned OPC, we're using, uh, well, the thing called OPC and we're still using the OPC DA uh, that's what we run into in the field. OPC UA is a technically superior successor to that. I don't think there's any arguing to that, but it's only until recently that we actually encounter it in the field uh, ourselves. So it's probably something we will add to Inca, but so far it hasn't been something that we encountered in practice or that we really needed in practice. If you need it in your current projects, you're not stuck. There's ways uh, for it to get it to work. It's not built into Inca right now. And the final topic that we have currently under investigation that I want to mention is we're looking into closed loop identification. Uh, we're aiming at making that available both in Inca Discovery, the MPC modeling tool, but also in Aptitune, it can be valuable if the data you collect uh, for Aptitune it does, it does not require that you open the loops that are there. So closed loop identification is going to be valuable there. Which brings me to the end of my slide pack. Um, happy World Day, Inca. And uh, as a personal note, thanks to everybody who made the journey along with Inca a most enjoyable one. Um, on to the next 25 years, although I won't promise that I will give another webinar in 25 years ago. No, no I, 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 don't, I don't promise. I don't rule it out either, but it's not. We're going to invite you at least. That's, that's, that's going to be nice. Okay, good. Um,
you take control. Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you very much, uh, Leon. Um, indeed, when, when we're going to send uh, the link to the recording, I'm just going to add also the link to the Architect uh, webinar. Perhaps that would be a good uh, good idea. In the meantime, so we got already a couple of questions in. Uh, so if uh, people have uh, questions, please raise them through the Q&A uh, system. Voila, a couple of new ones are coming in right away. Um, so I will start from the top and go down to the bottom, and depending on how much time we have, we can uh, treat them all or a subset, uh, but at least we're going to answer all the questions, uh, and if necessary, a couple of them by email, and so let's see how far we can get. Good. Uh, first question, how Inca differ from other APC products, and can Inca integrate with third-party optimizer? Um. I guess it's safe to say that the Inca that you handle the microphone, uh, that nope. the the MPC technologies they um, are pretty similar um, these days. Uh, if you compare around PCT, uh, Pace, um, Inca, um, maybe to a lesser extent uh, DMC. I guess the feature sets are rather similar that you find there. So I wouldn't say Inca has a, a killer feature, a killer difference. Um, but I think all the relevant features are in there. Can you use it together with an optimizer? Uh, yes, sure, uh, surely. Um, what's happening usually when you interface with an optimizer is that you take the ideal values for certain variables from the optimizer, uh, static values that can evolve over time, but there's no, let's say, trajectory towards the future for them. That uh, would correspond to ideal base tuning. Doesn't rule out the possibility, of course, base tuning, by the way. It's not one or the other. You can have both. Um, and Inca also has had the uh, possibility since the beginning to have uh, predictions for how an ideal value might evolve over time. So even in the situation that your optimizing, uh, that your your real time optimizer is not telling you this is your ideal value, but it's telling you this is your ideal trajectory. Even that can be followed. So yes, Inca can be combined with a real time optimizer. Okay. And then there is a question, I think you already addressed it uh, in one of your last slides, but I still want to raise it. Can Inca have features of auto-identification model and how it works robustly with or or without degrading model quality? Well, I guess that's, <clears throat> that's exactly the part where I believe that uh, that is something that should not be automated. Um, the process that the engineer goes through when he takes, let's say, the best identified model to the best uh, uh, control model, and from there to the uh, optimally tuned uh, uh, controller. That's a process that involves steps that do not translate to optimizing a cost function to recognizing a pattern. So I'm not uh, a firm believer that that is a process you can uh, automate or that you should want to optimate, uh, automate. You can make the workflow smoother. Uh, that would be something I, I would believe in, but the, I would be very suspicious of the promise of automating that process. That's, that's not something we have on the radar for income. Okay. And uh, next question, interested to hear about the different system model types that can be used in Inca MPC. As example, transfer functions, uh, impulse response, uh, state space, etc. cetera. Um, as it happens, we used to have uh, different types of models inside Inca. And if you look very carefully at what the difference is and uh, what difference that makes at control time, that's very little. Doesn't matter that much how you make your predictions, as long as you make accurate predictions and as long as your model is linear. Um, so whether you use transfer functions or the FIR representation or state space, Inca behaves the same. Um, it does make a difference during the modeling phase, um, but there too, our experience is that the FIR models, they 
um, they may look a little wiggly. They, they have a high variance error, as they, they say, because you need to have a lot, uh, to estimate a lot of parameters. But that actually uh, gives you models that uh, are rather good models for your process. We, we have gone through the motions of comparing FIR with lower order models, etc. And it may not be what the textbooks on identification predict, but in our experience, the FIR models are actually the more accurate ones. So to return to the, the question, I don't think it makes a difference for control. And in uh, identification, at least a high order model like FIR is the one that you need. We are looking into generalizing the uh, kinds of model, um, especially with an eye on uh, closed loop identification. Um, we don't expect that uh, Inca will at some point estimate second order models right out of the box for MPC. It is something we will uh, we see happening in the context of loop tuning of FT tune, but for uh, MPC, I don't see the benefit. Okay, um, and that's more a question from from an engineer. I think that that uses the technology. Can you estimate the impact of enhancements you made when you look back to the first uh, releases? So, and can you say more or less how easier it is to configure a controller now than in the early days? Well, I can definitely say something about that as far as the configuration effort goes. Hmm. Um, and let me start by by saying that uh, by by talking about that, um, it would usually take you days to have an environment um, that's well that would be initial starting point for tuning uh, when it all had to be made by hand. Days depends, of course, on how many MVCVs that you have. Uh, but assuming that let's say you have fifteen MVs, thirty CVs which was huge at the beginning, which, which is nothing unusual uh, these days, that would take you order of magnitude days. Um, that would become less uh, in configurator, but it's still not uh, a matter uh, of a few minutes. But I recall the first presentation I gave in configurator, that was a one hour presentation, and I uh, made uh, an Inca configuration with an, an MPC, a data server, the whole shebang in that hour. Doesn't mean that you would have a controller in an hour because I copied all the, the tuning parameters from somewhere else, but the, the configuration work itself, that was that order of magnitude. It was a small controller. Uh, I didn't spend a lot of time finding the OPC tags. I took all of that for granted. That's what it took now. Now, these days I can import a model into architect and I can start simulating that controller a minute later. I just press the simulate button. Doesn't make sense doing that without going through, uh, let's say an initial configuration step where you uh, give limits, you give uh, prioritizations, you give, uh, well, typical moves, uh, etc. those kind of things. But the configuration, uh, it takes the, the configuration effort to have an MPC that uh, has come down to hours. Good. Uh, perhaps the last technical one. Can I still use my old license? Uh, I perhaps don't completely understand the question. Is that the old license based on the new uh, um, for the new system? Perhaps. Yeah. For. Um, for version 23.4 and later, you need different licenses. So the, if you have a license for an older version, um, you need to ask us a new one. Um, we have tried to make that process easy and I'm trying to uh, make my laptop pretend that I don't have a new license yet. And here we are. If you run the IPCOS license wizard, um, it will, it detects on my uh, laptop, and I'm cheating a bit, uh, but that I don't have a, an old license. So it's asking, do you want to upgrade your license? If I say yes, it will generate a file. You will 
uh, have to send that to support and we send you a new fire type license back. You can actually already do that uh, without installing the suite first. Uh, the license wizard you're looking at right now, it can run standalone, so without an income configuration. So you can request a new style license uh, before you have the suite already so that you have the new license in place already by the time you upgrade to 23.4, but you you will need a new license. Okay, good. Okay, okay. so well, I, I think that, that concludes uh, the uh, webinar, Leon. Many thanks for the uh, explanation and to the uh, the audience. Yeah, so it's already uh, 12 minutes past six in the evening here in, uh, in the Netherlands. So thank you for uh, hanging in. Uh, but we're going to conclude here. So if you have any technical questions or commercial questions, commercial questions in the sense that can I become a value as a reseller or a partner? Can I, um, as an engineering company, uh, start implementing, uh, first of all, with our guidance, of course, uh, in gas, uh, in gas uh, somewhere else in uh, the world? They are definitely, uh, we're definitely interested in that. So please uh, contact us. Um, so I will send, as I said, a uh, link to the uh, with the recording to uh, to everybody. I will add the architect link uh, webinar uh, on top of that. So uh, voila, and um, so thank, thank you very much, much everybody. everybody. Leon, I'm going to invite you for the Teams meeting in 25 years. Then. That's, that's yeah. right. So yep. uh, I'll, hey. be, I'll be happy to join. <laughs> okay. Have a nice day, everybody, and uh, I hope to hear from uh, you soon. Uh, good evening or good day. Bye bye.